Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delray Gaming. Welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm actually going to walk you through using the Unity Debugger. I have some things in my game where I'm capturing the input from the keyboard by pressing the letter G. And then I am basically tracing through the debugger the event that is getting executed. But I also have some events that are coming from the controller. And I want to show you how we can use the Magic Lib Remote and then by generating an event that comes from that and actually going all the way through the Unity and debugging that code. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at how we can do that. All right, guys, so I want to show you how I go about debugging my game. And not only a Magic Leap game, but any type of game in Unity can be done the way that I'm going to show you. So the first thing that I normally do is I set up the debugger and I have a video in YouTube where I go through and setting up the debugger with VS Code. If you're using Visual Studio, the the full edition then you probably don't need to do what i'm going to show you but if you don't have it just watch make sure that you watch the video for vs code which i'm going to put in the description of this video and you can follow it so just assuming that you have that set up already what i'm going to show you is how we can we can actually debug this scene i'm going to be pressing a button on my keyboard which is going to simulate the the controller when that button is executed, it's gonna generate a level. So let me show you without actually debugging to see to see what it's currently doing. So if I go to the content area and we look at the game, the way that this works is this component here, the is actually an environment, and, and that component holds the position of where I'm gonna be putting the structures in my game. So the way that this works is basically the controller will move that around based on the what actually got generated as a mesh and if it's an area where i can place the structure it'll basically allow me to place the structure if not it won't allow me to do that so a lot of times you might want to debug it if you have any issues so how do you go about debugging it so right now if i hit you know if i hit the letter g it's going to generate a level at that position and, and that's pretty good when it comes to you know if everything works but if it doesn't work you may want to know what's happening so the way that I do it is I go in and let's go ahead and open up the, the script that generates the level, which is under the game. So if I look at the level manager, which is the script that is responsible for generating the levels, and, and we can do a couple of things in here. I mean, we could add breakpoints to the awake. We can add breakpoints to the start. So when you're using VS Code, you can go to the debugger area here. And really all it takes is to download an extension so let me show you that pretty quickly even even when i said that i wasn't going to show you that just so that it can save you time so if you just look for unity debugger or just unity debug i think it might not show it because i already have it installed yeah so it doesn't show because i already have it installed so either way i can show you let me go ahead and do this and you can see everything that I have, everything that I have installed. So the one that you want to search for is the debugger for Unity. And all you need to do is basically install it just by searching like I did. Once you find it, you'll click on install. It'll install it all. It might ask you to basically reload VS Code. You will reload VS Code. And then that's basically all you need to do. Once you do that piece, you're going to be at the same place that I am right now. And you might not see these at the very beginning. All you have to do is just click on the settings button and what it's going to do is going to give you a drop down and that drop down will have an option to select unity you'll select unity and then it'll show you unity editor on this drop down here once you do that it'll create this file that you see on the right hand side you really don't have to do any customization on it it'll create it automatically for you so once you once you do that all you have to do is you see play to attach it and that will attach it to the unity processor you can kind of see here that it's attached to the Unity process. And it's a lot easier than doing it in Visual Studio where you have to go into, you know, attach, attach to the debugger. Once you do it once, it's easier the next time. But at the beginning, it's not as intuitive. So once you have that, then really all I have to do is to say that I go back into Unity. And let's say that we want to add a breakpoint on the awake. And I may want to add a breakpoint when, when I try to generate a level. And that's what this one is doing right here. I'm capturing the G key. So I'm just going to put a breakpoint right there as well. So we're running the debugger. And I know that we're running the debugger because I get this little window here. 
that means that it's running. You can see that these are not enabled. This one is basically to step over, to step into, and to step out. You can also do a restart, a stop, or a pause. So because I have it attached already, now what I can do is I can hit play, and that's already attached that process. So that's going to find, it's basically going to inject itself into the life cycle of the game. And the life cycle of the game starts with the, with the awake in this case. And so you can see that I'm basically hitting that breakpoint. We, we see the yellow. The other thing that is really cool about this is I get access to the locals. So I have access to everything that is in, you know, that is in memory right now. The, the other thing that is really, really cool here too, that I use a lot, I use the watchers a lot. So I could say, okay, add, I want to add a new watcher, basically a new expression. Let's say that I wanted to know what this, that name was. So this that name in this case is going to be the mono behavior, which is the game object name gives me the name of the object that I'm on right now. So I can also say, okay, I want to see, maybe I want to see if the game object has set. In this case, it's going to be set because game object is basically what I'm debugging through. Say that I wanted to see game object, the tag, to see the tag. So this game object doesn't have a tag. Or maybe I want to see, so in this case, this is this. This is the level manager. So maybe I want to know what level we're on. So I could say this, that level number. I could also say do something like this, that enable, and see if it's enabled. The other thing that is really cool about these two is not only you can use the watchers, and this will stay. So if I want to debug it later and I want to see the watcher, those will be there. The other thing that I can do that I use a lot is the debug console. I can do the same thing here. I can say this, that name. That will show me the value here. I can say this. And not only it shows me the, you know, the game object that I'm on, you can also click on expand, and that will show you everything that is under that object. I can now also expand the game object. I can go into the scene. I can go and drill in basically until I'm basically at the very end. So I can look at the static members, non-public members. So this has a lot of information in it. And, and VS Code did an amazing job at exposing all of this. It used to be that you could only see, okay, if I do this, that name, I could only see the name. If I do this, I could only see, you know, what this was. But this is very extendable. You can see, you know, everything that is going on. I can look at my watchers here. I can look at all the different breakpoints that I have already set. So I can see, you know, on line 32, I have a breakpoint. On line 59, so I can go down to say, okay, oh yeah, I have a breakpoint on line 59. I can say, okay, I want to toggle that breakpoint. Maybe I don't want to, you know, have a breakpoint at that line. You can also remove these if you wanted to from this menu as well. So this gives, gives you a lot of flexibility. You can look at the threads that are running. You can look at, you know, there's a lot of information that you can you can look in here. So let's just keep going and go ahead and hit play. And it looks like I caused a problem by doing, by pausing this. So let me go ahead and stop this. And what we're going to do is go ahead and reattach it. Excellent. So now that we're attached, I'm going to go ahead and add another breakpoint on the start. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity, hit play, and that should get into the awake. So you can now see, like I was showing you, all the different things that are available. You can see the variables, the variables that I'm looking in the watch. You can see the different threads that are running. You can look at the breakpoints and also the debug console. So the other thing that I can do is I can also use these arrows to step over. So if I wanted to step over, now I can see that the root is set. Not only I can see that the root is set, but I can also see the variables that are assigned to that. So the root is basically has an array of items, and I can look at the atmosphere, I can look at the camera view. So basically what the root is, is, is all the levels that I have in the game. It, it, they get deserialized, and, and basically I use that information to generate the levels dynamically in the game. So this next line is just saying, okay, find the game, and then get the game manager. You can see that if I do just step over, now the environment is going to be set. And I can also go back here if I wanted to and add a new watcher and say, okay, let's see if the environment is set. If I type it in, and let's say that I type in something that was incorrect. Let's just do environment with a double T. You're going to see that 
it didn't find that variable because it hasn't been set or it just doesn't exist. I can also go ahead and delete it. So I can say, okay, remove expression. I can remove, actually remove multiple expressions if I wanted to. So I can do remove all expressions. That's gonna remove everything. I can go back here and say, okay, I wanna see the audio manager and the audio manager hasn't been set just yet, but you can see that it's null. So what I can do, I can say, okay, step over, I step over and now I have my audio manager and I have access to everything that the audio manager is getting. So now what I can do is hit play and play is gonna take me to the next line, the next breakpoint. So I added a breakpoint in the start. So I added a breakpoint on the start and you can see that the level number is getting set to zero. This is temporarily because I'm debugging and debugging the game. This line is basically attaching an event handler, which is handle on trigger down for the controller. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit play one more time. And that's basically going to go out. I don't have any more breakpoints in here unless I press the letter G. So let's go back into the game. So let's say that I wanted to press the letter G to generate a level, so which is what I'm going to do. So what so what happened is I actually hit that breakpoint just like I, you know, just like I was expecting. I can step into in the way that this method works is executed from two places. It can be executed from, you know, the update method, which I'm overriding so that I can test it basically using the input from the keyboard, or I can also execute it by actually triggering that from the controller. So if I go here and I step over, I step over, you can kind of see that, you know, I can look at everything that is getting set. So the other thing that I can also do here is I could actually test this with the Magic Leap Remote. So for instance, in this case, I'm, I'm hitting the letter G to get into this meta. But if I wanted to use the remote controller and actually test it to see how it's going to look in the experience, I could actually use the Magic Leap Remote. So let's try that and see if that works with the debugger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play and let's just, you know, let's go ahead and, and finish running. Okay. So that's, that's completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the Magic Leap Remote. And I'm going to show you that this is really cool because I can actually debug the, you know, actually getting an event from the remote and then sending that information to Unity. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, yeah, start the simulator. And that's going to start the head, the eye, the hands, the input control, everything. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up my room and I'm going to stop Unity because I want to start it with the simulator on. Now I'm going to hit play. And you can see that that is going to attach to the, basically to the remote. And we don't need to have these breakpoints anymore. So we're just going to hit play on that one. And also let's remove the one on star, hit play. And we shouldn't hit anymore for now because we have one on this. So the one that we need to add is one over here. And you're going to see that this one won't get executed because this is only when it happens through the editor and when I'm pressing the letter G on my keyboard. So, but this one will get generated because the is getting bound to the ML input on trigger down and that is actually getting sent from the, from the remote. So let's go into the Magic Leap remote. You can kind of see that if I'm starting to look down, and I'm looking around, everything is getting basically converted to a mesh. So if I go back into Unity, you can see that that stuff is working. So the thing that is cool about this though, is this is actually acting like if it was running on the real device. So if I go back in here and I look at my action bindings and you look at the control, what I did here is I went into control zero and I mapped my trigger action to a letter on my keyboard, which is the letter Z. So if we go back in here and I press letter Z, you can see that that got triggered, but the one that, you know, the one from the Unity editor didn't get triggered. And that's because this is actually getting triggered from the remote itself. And in fact, if I look at the controller ID, that is getting set to a zero, and then the value is getting set to a one. So it's acting like if it was a real remote. So if I go in here, you can kind of see the is editor is set to true. And that one is, that one is set to true because I already set it to true previously. But the cool thing about this one is simply simulating the event coming from the remote and I was able to execute it. So if I hit play and you, you were able to see that I was getting a debug entry in there. 
and I hit the breakpoint here as well. And now I can see, you know, things work. So if I go here and I say, okay, Z again, I'm executing and going into the debugger. So you can test your game by using the remote. You can test your game by basically running within Unity. You can also attach the, the device to Unity. And I haven't done that yet. I'm planning to do that in the future. But for now, this should give you enough information to get going with, you know, the debugger in Unity. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And make sure that you check out gamedev.net. They are my sponsor and they have amazing resources for game developers. And also don't forget to check out my Patreon page where I'm basically sharing information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also sharing source code as I work on all the prototypes. So thank you very much, guys.